Uh, crimes involving violence, particularly firearms, are always very concerning to police and the community, and we fully understand that. Investigations so far have not determined any link between the three offences in the last 24 hours. Police are investigating these matters as a high priority and the community can rest assured that we will aggressively pursue all lines of inquiry. In relation to the incident up in Mount Gravatt yesterday, yesterday afternoon, a swift police response has already led to a 24-year-old male being charged. And obviously, as that offender is now before the court, it's not appropriate for me to make any detailed comment in relation to that specific incident. Investigations are ongoing in relation to the other two incidents at Pimpermar and Banyo, and we would encourage any members of the public who have any information in relation to either offence to contact Crime Stoppers anonymously if necessary on 1800 333 000. Thank you. Happy to take questions. It will be alleged that the victim and the offender were known to each other and that the offence happened inside an address. Is there any danger there? I know it's some sort of over lockdown and there's no one nearby school and that sort of thing there. Were you concerned that maybe set outside that property? No, we were just concerned. Initially, obviously, we didn't know the identity of the offender and uh, he had been seen going into a house. Uh, we weren't sure what the circumstances were, who was in the house. So as a precaution, we obviously established a cordon and uh, brought in the necessary resources to make sure that it was resolved uh, quickly and safely and try and prevent any uh, further danger or any other member of the public who was not involved. Um, how long did the stay occur after the incident at Hyde Park? Uh, no, we haven't. Uh, we're still waiting to interview the victim at, at hospital and we're hoping that uh, that interview will lead us to some better information about the circumstances of this including where the actual offence happened, the primary crime scene. Uh, he received uh, multiple gunshot wounds uh, in the, uh, the torso and, and the leg, I'm led to believe. Uh, he's undergoing surgery, uh, but I understand the latest advice is that the injuries are not life-threatening at this stage. Uh, the forensic investigation is obviously still ongoing and it's fairly early in the investigation so I'm not able to particularise uh, the type of weapon that may have been used other than to say that the, uh, the victim did receive uh, multiple uh, wounds. Are the police still investigating the incident at Pimpermar? Yes, they are. Yes, the information we have is that the victim is a member of an outlaw motorcycle gang, but it's yet to be determined whether that membership has anything to do with the circumstances of the offence. Who would pay this gang? Uh, the rebels. Is there anything in the victim description of the bike-related crime that you've seen? Would that be fair enough to say or speculate on? No, look, it's far too early. Um, we have no reason to believe that there is uh, presently any uh, tension uh, that might have led to this. And as I said, the fact that this individual happens to be a member of a gang may be purely coincidental and unrelated to the circumstances surrounding the shooting. Is there any chance um, that he was killed within the statute of Florida Police or was it Now I understand uh, that the house that he went to for assistance was uh, just a personal friend of his. No, that's one of many uh, questions that we're unsure of at the moment. I would suggest that it probably occurred not too long before he drove to the house for help, but exactly where it occurred, we simply don't know. So could I ask uh, anybody in the Brisbane metro area who may have heard gunshots uh, in the early hours of this morning or has any other information they think might be relevant uh, to contact Crime Stoppers? Uh, the North Brisbane District CIB have set up a major incident room at Hendrick Police. We're taking this very seriously, and members of the public can either call the police there or through Crime Stoppers. Have you lost a great deal of blood? What state were you in when you came to this painful event? 
Uh, obviously, I wasn't at the scene, but I'm told that there was uh, a significant amount of blood inside the vehicle. The wounds were obviously very serious. It was treated as an emergency situation. He was taken immediately to hospital for surgery. No, look, that, that won't be established until we get the chance to speak to him and try and flesh out all of the circumstances of this. Um, all that we know is he did present himself at the friend's house around 3 a.m. this morning and they contacted police and the ambulance. Well, is it fair to say that he's presented in most cases down in the friend's or friend's house or kitchen? You're saying not down at Beaches Road? Uh, well, look, that, um, that's not a... Uh, an obstacle that we think we're necessarily going to confront. We'll just have to deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis. We haven't had a chance to speak to the victim yet, so uh, it's difficult to speculate uh, on his level of cooperation with us. Because Ms Mark Dorsey, in many ways, is the lighting end of the stick here with not revealing the details. Is that you? Well, uh, if the, the victim were to choose not to cooperate with us, it just makes our task a little bit difficult, but we're, we're used to that approach. We certainly don't let that deter us. And you can rest assured that we will pursue this investigation as vigorously as we possibly can, with or without the assistance of the victim. How would you describe the family to you? Do they have any information about the family? Uh, just as I'm told, just a member. Uh, well, I don't have that information with me, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not aware that we've actually seized anything. Um, Obviously, we would examine the house, the vehicle, uh, for any possible forensic evidence. But uh, as I say, we're confident that's not the primary crime scene, and that's yet to be dis yet to be established. No, I don't. Yeah, look, until we know the circumstances, uh, he could have been shot uh, at a very near location or he could have been shot somewhere quite some distance away and driven. We, we simply don't know. So I could speculate all day long, but uh, we just simply don't know the circumstances and the location where the uh, shooting occurred. And so that's what we're waiting to talk to the victim to try and help us fill in all those pieces. Uh, I understand we're hoping that we'll be able to do that later today. No, I think it's a consequence of his surgery and hospitalisation and we'll just have to wait for an appropriate time when we can get that opportunity. As I said, uh, we're not in a position yet because we haven't finished the forensic examination to determine uh, whether it was a single weapon and if so, what sort of a weapon. No, look, I can understand community concerns. Whenever we have a firearm-related crime, it's obviously a cause of concern to the community and it's a cause of concern to the police department. That's why we put very significant resources into solving uh, as many of these offences as we can. The fact is, in, in the last 24 hours, we've just had an unfortunate uh, convergence of three incidents, which at this stage have absolutely no link. So it, it gives a false impression. What I can say is that anyone who studied the statistics on homicide would know that there's been a steady decline in the use of firearms in homicides. And uh, the same is true of armed robbery. The vast majority of armed robberies are not committed by offenders who have real weapons. They're committed by people who have knives or other weapons or replica weapons. What that suggests to me is that uh, people have difficulty accessing illegal firearms and they have to resort to other weapons. Now, Pimpamara, as you know, um, a man uh, entered that premises, uh, made demands to get some property and fired a weapon once into the leg of the victim there. We'll be speaking to the victim and the other occupant of the house again today to see if we can establish uh, any more information than we received yesterday. Sorry? 
No, look, we're, uh, we're investigating that matter uh, very aggressively. The Coomba CIB have the lead on that, uh, assisted by the major and organised crime spot on the Gold Coast. And I say, anyone who has any information, please contact Crime Stoppers or the Coomba CIB. Why is the major organised crime spot involved in that one? Uh, because that's a standard practice any time we have uh, a firearm involved crime on the Gold Coast. That's part of their charter. Do you know who investigates the uh, No, not to my knowledge. Uh, there's no information to that effect at the moment. Uh, I think he said in statements yesterday that uh, he didn't know that person, uh, but we're going to speak again to him and uh, the other person who's present to see if they can add any more information to what they told us yesterday. What's your response uh, to the man coming up to him, taking him into custody for the gun? He thought the bloke let it go. Is that a brave or a foolish act? Well, uh, it's always difficult in the circumstance without knowing who the antecedents of the the people involved, but it's always a, a calculated risk uh, you, uh, confronting someone who's got a loaded firearm uh, and, you, and you're not armed, then uh, my advice would be to be compliant. No, the, uh, as I understand it, the offence occurred outside of the house but inside the property line. No, it's not. It's a very concerning event. It led to uh, someone being shot. We take that incredibly seriously and that's reflected in the response in terms of the uh, resources and the priority that we give these uh, investigations. No, we're very concerned about it. We don't like to see this sort of crime happen and neither does the community. The incident uh, in Essendon yesterday, uh, Solvay neighbours don't report the owners to police a number of times. Uh, children play toys in the front yard. Uh, look, I'm not able to speculate on that. Obviously, uh, the matter's before the court, and it just wouldn't be appropriate for me to go into any sort of uh, details like that. Have there been any similar incidents in or near the Gold Coast where a community of five people have been armed with a gun and these sort of are armed problems? Well, if there have been, I'm certainly not aware of any link to yesterday's offence. We're treating that as a one off. And uh, there's nothing that I'm aware of that would suggest it's been linked to any previous offences of a like nature. Do police get any more resources or any more police to utilise to be able to track down this gun crime that you're seeing at the moment? Look, uh, we take firearm crime very seriously, as you know. We've established a major and organised crime of 30 officers on the Gold Coast. We've established a firearms team specifically for the Gold Coast. We have a state firearms trafficking team in Brisbane. We take it seriously and I think we've, we're resourcing it appropriately. Uh, there's going to be a separate press conference held right now up on the Sunshine Coast and the, the local detective inspector will be uh, detailing that. Suffice to say, that the difference between these offences is no firearm involved in that offence at all. Uh, look, I'm, I'm not able to confirm that, but I expect that Detective Inspector Drinnan, who's doing that, will be able to provide whatever details we can. Thank you very much.